Welcome to Build in Motion. We're a brand new channel that focuses on cars and lifestyle. In today's episode, we're going to review the 10.2 inch DeSeta Android car stereo system. We've actually had it installed in the 2006 C6 Corvette for several months, and I'm gonna tell you all about it. If you're new to this channel, hit that subscribe button because you don't wanna miss out on our car giveaway that we're gonna set up in the future. Now let's get going. The stereo we're reviewing is simply called the DeSeta 10.2. It comes with what they call a powerful hexa-core 64-bit processor, which actually seems to power the system pretty quickly with no slowdown that I've experienced. All right, let's get this review on the road. First step, let's see how fast it takes for this system to actually turn on, boot up, and be functional. Ready for use. Okay, about 24 seconds, 25 seconds. And Bluetooth. It took about 40 seconds for the Bluetooth to connect. Let's now do the following test. Okay, so here we go. You just got into your car and your Bluetooth is off on your phone. You turn your Bluetooth on. How long before it connects? Look at that, it's not even connecting. That is a major problem because now what that does is it forces you to actually turn your stereo off. In essence, you have to turn your car off, turn the car back on to connect. So as far as turning Bluetooth off and on while you're driving or while you're already in the car, forget it, ain't gonna happen. So just to show you guys, in my Jeep Wrangler, uh, 2019, I just bought it a few months ago. My Bluetooth connects incredibly fast. I know some of you are probably thinking, oh, this guy is completely spoiled, but when you get used to it connecting really fast and you can get in and out of your car and it connects on a dime, you, you, you get used to that and you want that luxury. So let's see just how fast it connects to my car. I'm gonna turn the stereo on. Look at that, it's already connected. That was maybe, I don't know, I'll have to look at it, but that was a number of seconds. Okay, so here's another cool thing. Watch this. If I turn my Bluetooth off, like it is right now, and I turn it back on, bam, it's connected. You see that? It connects so fast, seconds, literally. I'll do it again, maybe on this screen. Off. And back off. Connected for call on. Literally, it takes two seconds to connect. That is what I'm talking about. In the VET, it connects much, much, much slower. The touchscreen on this unit is actually very responsive. I do like the feel of it. It feels like a modern day tablet or a cell phone. It never lags and is always very accurate where I point. This unit has four 50 watt outputs for powerful sound. It has one mid, one sub, and even one HDMI output. If you go to amplifier, it has a 15 band equalizer. You can easily adjust the speaker settings, volume levels, fader controls, or even set it up to preset audio settings such as 
pop, rock, jazz, automatically just by changing the different presets that are in there. One thing worth noting is in settings you can actually change the language and apparently this system has over 50 different languages to choose from. Let's see here. Add a language. Yeah. A whole bunch of different languages that this can be programmed to. So that is definitely a plus. Yes, this unit does have support for Androids and iPhones via a mirror link tool, which I haven't used myself. One cool feature of an Android system like this is you can actually go to the Play Store and as long as there's a hotspot connection or uh, if you have a 4G, 3G dongle set up, you can install any apps that are available to you on the App Store. Everything from WhatsApp, Facebook, um, Netflix, YouTube, you can install all the apps available in the Play Store and use them right here in your car. That is an awesome feature that you may take advantage of and you may not. Okay, so when it comes to Bluetooth calls, I don't know if it's a problem with the stereo or the second bad mic that they've sent me, but the mic that comes with this system is incredibly sensitive. It picks up a lot of road noise. I cannot make phone calls with people without hearing complaints, people telling me that I sound like I'm in a wind tunnel or they're hearing a lot of static. Let's go for a road test and show you guys what I mean. Okay. Sounds so sounds pretty good. Like I can still hear a little bit of static, but that could just be this phone speaker. Okay, so I'm gonna start driving, and I'm really close to the highway entrance too. Yeah, you got real static. -y. I'm doing about twenty miles an hour. How does it sound at twenty? Um, when you when you uh, started off, like I could tell when you were uh, starting to drive, it gets really staticky. Yes, uh, very static -y. It's it's pretty shaky. Sounds fine, but they're still static. Would you be able to have a, a decent conversation with me like this, or is it really hard to make out I can, my words and everything? I can tell what you're saying um, pretty well, but when there are times when like you go fast or you start off the line where it gets like real staticky and like sounds like you're tapping the microphone. From time to time. And I'm now getting off the highway. Tell me when it stopped when the static disappears. It hasn't disappeared at all. Doing 40 miles an hour. Doing There's about more. 30 miles an hour. And I'm coming to a stop. You sound great now. They're still st <laughs> they're still static, but I can still I can hear you real well. So the general uh, idea of this microphone and stereo uh, setup is, as long as I'm not driving, you can hear me great. Yeah. I am not too fond of this radio. Um, you've got all these different presets that pop up at the bottom. And I don't know, I just don't like the interface. I don't like the layout. Maybe some of you do, but just not my style. I, I like something more simplistic. I don't like having all these numbers and presets showing up on my screen. Um, I don't know what AF is. I don't know what TA is. I guess I should probably read the instruction manual online, but 
There's a little too many buttons for me. One of the things I did not like about the system is it doesn't have, uh, it doesn't have Sirius XM, not internally or externally. There's no way of setting up Sirius XM. And I actually do enjoy my XM radio. I had to install an app. And once I install the app, then I can log in with my account and just didn't find that very efficient because I have to hotspot my phone each time to do that. Okay, mobile hotspot is turned on. Hopefully this will connect to my... Are we connected yet? Both devices connected, so even the hotspot takes some time and finesse to get it to work. Okay, now I'm connected. That actually connected pretty fast once I actually turned the Wi-Fi on. But again, it's just one extra step. You're gonna get into your car, you're gonna turn your mobile hotspot on, then you're gonna have to turn your Wi-Fi on, on, on there, make sure it connects. After all that is said and done, then you can go into your, um, your apps and you can start browsing the web or you can watch YouTube or you can go into your Sirius XM app. Okay, so while you're driving and you're trying to discover like new music or look for a different category, you have all of this real estate, but instead of them sizing it down, you have to scroll up and down to find things. And it's just, it isn't efficient and it makes it really challenging while you're driving to find channels. If I go to all channels, even so, I mean, look at that, I have, so much space yet the layout and this isn't a problem with uh with uh the the stereo itself this is probably sirius xm's fault but i can only see two channels at a time the last thing i want to do is drive around and try to look for this little row here to find the music that i want to play so as far as using xm radio in this stereo in this manner with the app does not work good for me and if I don't have good reception on my phone then guess what I'm not going to be able to play any music and the whole idea um, with uh, XM satellite radio is that you get coverage everywhere you go so this is one thing that is pretty cool you can actually go in and watch YouTube while you're driving I don't believe that it is legal it is a major distraction but you can do it and i didn't find myself ever using this feature because when i'm driving or when i'm about to get on the road i'm not going to fiddle with the uh, youtube i'm just going to want to play a playlist or play a radio channel on xm and, and and drive as opposed to find something on youtube but i'm sure there are people out there some of you who are watching you probably have your playlist on youtube and you wouldn't mind just hopping in and turning on your play playlist and, and, and going. So for me, it is a cool feature, but I just didn't find it useful. Get out of there. Uh, oh, you can also browse the web, which is really nice. But again, one of those features that I thought, oh my God, I would totally use this, but I never did. I mean, who needs to really browse the web while they're driving? <laughs> so great feature, but didn't find it useful. Basically, what you have with the stereo, you have a full Android tablet at your disposal that's powering your car stereo system. So really cool idea. Is it useful or not? That's up to you to decide. All right, I'm gonna get out of Google. Let's see what other features this system has. You can load a bunch of pictures on there and you can browse them on their gallery. Oh, the uh, logo. I put that in there. You can customize the background. That is pretty cool. At the end of the day, all I really need when I'm driving is my Sirius XM or the radio and my reverse camera. And that's it. You know, reverse camera or front camera if I have it. Let's put my car in reverse. Picture quality also isn't the best. You can see that. Kind of grainy. Not the best quality, but 
It is good enough. Get out of reverse. Um, these lights, you can illuminate them or you can have them turned off completely. Um, I was hoping that this speaker button was an immediate mute button, but it's not. It actually doesn't do anything. So I, I would like a mute button in my stereo. But that's pretty much it. It's like I said, this is a tablet that powers your car stereo. Um, it is really big. That is one of the other issues that I ended up not liking about it. Although I thought, oh, this is gonna be perfect. Let me install this in here. It's gonna look really cool. It's gonna look really modern. Like the new age Teslas that are out there and even Mercedes is doing it. They have these big fancy, you know, um, head units. But it just doesn't work for me. It does cover my top fan. It sits up above it. And while I can adjust it, let me see if I can show you where, how to adjust it. You can angle it up, down, right, left. And there's a way to actually adjust it up and down. You have to get your hands behind the system and there's two levers. You pull, they're spring activated and you can drop or raise the entire head unit. And although that is pretty cool, again, at the end of the day, this is just too big for my car. I really thought I would love it, but it's too big for my car. It still covers my vents. And I think at the end of the day, I just want a system that's flush mounted and just looks clean. So there you have it folks, that is the review of the Deseta 10.2 inch system. I'm actually going to completely remove it from my car. I think it's a little too big. I was hoping that I would like it, but it covers my vents and even if I move it up or down, it gets in the way. And the radio controls are just really simple. It doesn't have XM radio, which I overlooked when I originally ordered it. And I have XM in my car. I have XM in my in my Jeep and I got to have XM. I don't know why I never liked it before, but I have a free subscription to it. So I might as well take advantage of it. What do you want, dog? <laughs> Sophie wants to be in my arms. Other than that, the stereo is really nice. The display is beautiful. It has a lot of really cool features. So for those of you who do like the good features that the system has, this might be a perfect match for you. For now, I'm going to remove it. I'm ordering my Alpine and I'm going to probably do an install and review about that. Till next time, guys, hit that subscribe button. Again, don't forget one of our biggest goals is to be able to set up a car giveaway. And I won't be able to do that until we have enough subscribers and support from you guys. So hit that subscribe button and we'll see you guys next time.